I know Kung Fu. Was that it? Yeah. All right. I'm Perry. This is Koi. You're watching Collider Movie Club. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Collider Movie Club. We are going to be talking about my most mind-blowing theatrical experience of all time, a movie that means the world to me, a movie that changed my world, The Matrix. Unfortunately, no one can be told what The Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion brought to you by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere is the app that brings together your favorite digital movies into one convenient place. And now a brand new feature called My Lists will let you organize and personalize your digital collection in two very cool new ways. First, you can let the Movies Anywhere app do the work. It uses a unique algorithm that creates auto-curated suggested lists based on your purchase and watching habits. And second, you can create lists on your own or even tweak the auto-generated lists. Organize and categorize your movies however you'd like. Download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers in one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. So, Koi, before we started prepping for this episode, I didn't know that this was one of your favorite movies of, of all, all time. time. It makes so much <laughs> sense. It's tied for first. Like, it's literally tied for first as my favorite movie of all time. Tied. It is so important to me. It is probably foundational to who I am as a human being. And I don't think there's been a single other property singularly that affected how I perceive reality to this level of I, any medium. I can very much see and, and wholly believe everything <laughs> you just said. To the I, level that I was just talking about movies anywhere. And I was thinking that is a beautiful way to make something from one medium to another, to digitize, to share to have an algorithm shape like the Matrix. Oh, God. So if you look at what Movies Anywhere can do, it literally takes a bunch of different things and it allows you to streamline them into a way that's more digestible, into a way that you can actually function in a way with all of this content. And it's a digital way to connect others like the Matrix. Everything is the Matrix because the Matrix is everything. I'm very impressed by that spin <laughs> that you just put it. on it. Like the My List feature is literally an algorithm and in the Matrix, well, the My List feature would be a character because if you think about the different characters in the Matrix, the ones that are more powerful, the ones that have control over the actual yeah. Matrix, so this would be someone played by someone. I think, I think the Matrix has had a similar effect on me, but far after the fact, because mm -hmm. when the movie first came out, you know, I had to see it because I had to see everything that was super popular and I liked it, but it wasn't something that I necessarily got obsessed with at mm -hmm. the time. And I think it's just where my movie going brain was at. But in revisiting it now, and as someone who has an obsession with movies that are able to bring things to life in unique ways that are very difficult human truths to process. Yeah. Looking at something like, like, I know what an algorithm's function in the real world can be, but looking at it in the way that the Matrix depicts it, it, it makes me think of something that I thought I had a clear understanding of in a completely different way. And it makes me process that thing in a completely different way in my real world life. Now, this, I agree, is, is one of those movies that if you get the experience that the movie is is positing, you can't see the world the same. Yeah. If you are fully as invested in this movie as I was as, as a... Uh, preteen, teen, adult. You're like Neo. Yeah, with I, your I leaf, in your it. leaf thing. Yeah. Your leaf yes, thing. Yes, exactly. Your leaf I thing is the, the matrix. matrix. I completely see Can through the matrix. Can you just like, this is going to be weird and possibly not interesting, but explain okay. the leaf thing So now. the way I see color and the way I see shadows <laughs> isn't as I think other people perceive those things. When I look at, say, a tree in the sunshine, there's different levels to that image, kind of like if you're Photoshopping, separating the images. So the way I see color is the sun is hitting a leaf and that leaf is green, say, but then the shadow under the leaf is, isn't is darkness. It's the absence of color. So it's a render. It's, it's, a, it's a gap in color. It's a space. It's an open area. So so depending on the shifts of green, you can have a gradient of absence, but my brain sees uh, colors and shadows as different stacked tiers. 
So when I look at something for any longer than a glance, like if I look at curtains or I look at Perry, I see Perry's different, like her bangs are different levels of, of different gradients of color oh, of, of all those things. So I'm already self-conscious <laughs> enough about my bangs. No, it's Don't a good make thing. me look at the coloring it, it now. It adds depth. I know. So it's a fascinating <laughs> thing that when you actually take the time to look at anything, whether or not this is a simulation, which more and more we're thinking it is, more and more scientists are looking at where mm. we've gotten. Because think about it, we've been able to disprove so many things through science. And it seems like the further we get into AI, into the way we the, we are shaping technology, the more we're proving the matrix as opposed to disproving other things. We have for thousands of years had a certain set of beliefs and recently disproven them. For hundreds of thousands of years, human beings have invented concepts to explain away things. We invented Zeus to explain away our fear of thunder. With the matrix, what it does is it explains things that are becoming more real as opposed to disproving things. We live in the matrix. Whoa. It, mess, it messes with my brain quite a bit. And that, that's part of the reason why I think I'm in the min minority on this, because I know that um, a lot of folks out there prefer the first movie. Mm -hmm. I, I quite like the third and the... I was about to use the word more grounded, but it's it's not quite grounded. You know what I mean. But the real world, or maybe real world. Now I'm thinking about all the theory videos that I've watched about the new movie, and I don't know anything anymore. But I Can't like wait. the material that takes place on on in Zion, Zion. and yep. the uh, you know like the 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 grounded war like feel to it, and also the very human interactions that we get in that portion. What but fascinates me about Zion is they had to create machines to create Zion. So we are back <laughs> on a path into the Matrix through Zion. Zion is just step one of the Matrix taking back over in a new way. This conversation is making me fear talking about the Matrix ever because <laughs> like my brain is just folding over on That's the I beauty of make it. my hands fold anymore. <laughs> I am going to be like a puddle of mush by the end of this episode. But if you think about any of the philosophy, so the first time I saw the Matrix, I was 11 and I walked out of that theater and I wanted to understand like the cave theory. So yeah. like the cave is one of those amazing things we've talked about for, for, you know, generations, but it grows more true the more we invest in simulation. And I talk to you on every episode nearly about <laughs> at Koijandro versus Koijandro. And there's a, there's a version of me that lives digitally. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're experiencing me on a screen. You're experiencing a 2D version of myself and Perry that is a reality that you're living through right now. So you're living with data of us that is affecting your reality that is completely different than our reality right here in a way. And and more and more, we as human beings, especially since 1999, have plugged ourselves into this other reality. More and more, we are living intentionally as digital creatures. At what point does that threshold crack and we become more digital than analog? And that moment, we actually become creatures that identify more digitally. And more recently, they've done Ready Player One. And more recently, we're talking about these concepts, these broad strokes. But long ago, we plugged into the internet and we never fully left. But more and more, we're leaving this world. More and more, the corporal world is gone. And the Matrix predicted, warned, theorized all of this because we live in a simulation. All right, you're making me think of, of two things in particular now. One, one reason why I think The Matrix was so highly successful and so beloved by so many is because you can engage with the material in the way that you're talking about right now. Right. Or if you choose to, and it's totally fine, you could sit back, relax, and enjoy a really well shot action movie. Stunning sequences. Yeah. So you get you get a little bit of everything from this movie. But if I'm gonna lean more into what you are describing right now, that that's that's what the Matrix did. It was revolutionary. You didn't have other filmmakers at the time trying to take such leaps, and especially filmmakers so early on in their career. Yeah. What a Bold, bold swing. And what a cool situation to have a studio and so many super talented um, individuals in the industry be willing to get behind your concept to try to bring it to life. Because I imagine that back in the day before this movie existed, if someone handed me that script and I read it, I might have said a concept like that is unfilmable. Right. And and they filmed it in a way that not only do they capture it, but the images are stuck forever. They're like Bill Pope's cinematography, I will never forget some of those. They're frames. stuck forever, and it's like they they change the course of cinema and and sci-fi action with the concept alone. But then on top of that, within the movie, there's there's a you know tech 
yeah. tech achievements that completely changed the game for how these things are filmed. And and still to this day, you have people trying to mimic the things that The Matrix started. And you're talking about how it affected cinema. It affected life. I've never seen two black cats and not thought of a glitch. <laughs> I've never walked. And I often hold spoons and think about the idea that there is a possibility that I'm in a, in a situation where this isn't an actual thing. This all could be programming. This could be a series of ones and zeros. And I can't disprove that. I feel like we're going to go for lunch after. This and isn't... <laughs> You're going to look at a piece of silverware and get real quiet. I'm going to know exactly what's what's happening. I've gone, he's gone full spoon, boy. Come out of it, Coy. Come out of it. But it is a thing where it affects day-to-day -day life more than a lot of movies ever achieve because it is offering such ideas that can't be disproven. And it's offering them in a way that feels very tangible to even the most casual moviegoer. Now, you can dive into there's there's books, there's videos, there's like all sorts of ponderings. Or you could just watch the movie like an action movie and still be like, what is my reality? It means buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. Because Kansas is going bye-bye. The cool thing is it feels more tangible the further away from the release yeah. of the film that we've gotten. Prophetic. That, that is... I mean, because we're, we're constantly talking about the longevity of a film and when it becomes dated and it doesn't we're play We're doing as this well. on the internet. Right now, we're in the matrix to others, literally as we speak. And in between these moments, we're holding these devices that put us into a digital reality. Everything you and I do for work is in a digital reality space. Nothing we do except for the occasional live event has any reference to Zion. It's more in relation to the Oracle and Agent Smith. We're more plugged into the agent side than the Neo side on our career path at all times. Make sure Sometimes. you're still here. Sometimes you're here. <laughs> you're here. You're like a living, breathing human being right next to me. Maybe. Um, I'll ask the boring question. But this to also, you. by the way, this is electricity. Like this is only our oh. body receiving information through like our nerves send electricity to our brain. It's easy to program this to feel like a thing and it not actually be a thing. I know. So this I might I not be real right now. <laughs> Th those types of things keep me awake at night. <laughs> and, and now now they're going to send my mind spinning out of control today, thanks to you. I, I was prepared for this, though. Yeah, I was very yeah, okay, prepared for good. this. Just like I traumatized you with our horror episode. <sighs> I'm here I, to I was ready for all of this reality? right back. And think about when you're driving and suddenly you drift and you come back to your car and you're like, how did I get here? Think about when you make a phone call and you don't remember why you got there. Think about when you open the fridge and you're not even hungry. There are so many times in life we act like we're being programmed and there's an actual glitch. Think about how often you're like, why can't we actually go faster than XYZ. The technology's not there yet, or is the world being rendered around us? Think about how often you see something that looks like it's a fully not rendered graphic and you wonder if it isn't. Think about how often you remember something differently like the Berenstein Bears and what if that was an actual different reality we lived through? What if we got unplugged from the Matrix and the Bernstein Bears were one reality and the Berenstein Bears were another reality? What if the, the movie we all remember with um, the, what's his name, playing the genie actually happened in a different level of Matrix? All of this is possible. Well, I, I'm getting too far ahead, but this is the type of stuff that I think they're going to explore in the new Matrix movie, and it really excites me. Before we get there, let's let's rein it in a little, just because we're going to have a more a more interesting uh, question to pose to all of you in a minute. But just just briefly, I know the answer to this: red pill, blue pill, red pill, right? Oh, red pill yeah. in a heartbeat. I want the steak, but <laughs> <laughs> other but other than that, I can't I can't imagine ever thinking ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I don't think ignorance is bliss, but I do think there's an opportunity that the blue pill was the actual red pill. What if Morpheus himself was another program? Oh. And like Oracle and like Agent Smith, what if there's the opportunity that we needed to mislead the savior into thinking because it's just as easy to program Zion as it is to program the Matrix. Yeah. What if the blue pill is the one we meant to take and that puts us actually into the reality and all of the lines of dialogue he gives are about like I'm only offering the truth and nothing more. That's exactly what a, a program sees in ones and zeros. You're offered a one and a zero. I was about to say I'm holding really tight to like the purity of the red pill, blue pill scenario and debate. But again, my mind keeps going back to like little Easter eggs and things that I've picked up from the new trailer that are making me question everything what, two that moments, I thought I knew about this franchise. I recently rewatched it and I noticed there's uh, the bracelet Trinity has on mirrors the bracelet that Ajax is wearing in, in the, the scene where he almost dies and he wraps that religious bracelet around his wrist. And there's also a sequence where Neo reaches to the sky and like his destroying of all the sentinels he reaches up and the sentinels move in the same way birds migrate and mm -hmm. the birds are migrating in the same way the sentinels are moving around mm -hmm. so is that him remembering or are those birds representing the sentinels starting to invade is that a representative of them being surveilled like there's so many big questions in that trailer 
I'm very excited. I know. I'm so the first movie is a very, very important piece of cinema to me, but there's so many incredible sequences. Yes. So I have a question for the audience. All right, pose, pose the question, but explain to them why we're posing this question. I was looking for an answer. It's the question that drives us. If you've somehow gone this long in your life without experiencing the Matrix, we're going to give you the opportunity to think as weird as I do and plug into the Matrix. We're giving away five copies of the Matrix. And the way you enter into that is answering the question, what is your favorite singular sequence from the 1999 Matrix? Now, this is one of the most replicated movies of all time. Ask the entire scary movie franchise. This movie is foundational. So pick a scene, but only one and explain briefly why it's your favorite. And you need to do this on Twitter, you need to tag both of us, and then also do not forget, hashtag movies anywhere. You just do that, and you are eligible to win. The digital code can be redeemed on movies anywhere only. Registration with movies anywhere is required. It's open to US residents 13 and up. Download the free movies anywhere app or visit moviesanywhere.com to redeem your code. I, uh, I'm jealous of you if you've never seen it. And I'm also very curious how people experience it today because I do feel like it's a movie that's only gotten more relevant, which is a very mm-hmm. interesting thing for a movie from the late 90s. Think about how different the world was in the late 90s yeah. to today. And this movie is like a future of now. What is your favorite scene? It's either the sequence where... I love the 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 beautiful shootout in the that long like barrel flip when they yeah. walk through the electric when they walk through the metal detectors and they like or I like the scene where he first starts to experience uh, knowing how to do kung fu through programming mm-hmm. when they plug him in <laughs> and he learns via like data I've always wanted that ability that's my favorite wish fulfillment component of the Matrix if I could have that information ab- I wish I wish I would just sit there plugged in all day and I would want to learn everything yeah I mean maybe maybe that would maybe there's a like a cautionary tale in that <laughs> don't overload yourself with so much information but that that's a big a big moment for me and and honestly I'm not even saying this as a joke but but the steak moment yeah. because of how it brings back the the question of of red pill and blue pill and because that particular moment in the movie as you're seeing it on the screen you could you could practically taste it in yeah. your mouth and you're forced to weigh the same the same uh, options that they are in that movie and the movie's ability to to make you feel the pressure of making that decision is always very very impressive to me but what's interesting to me is that we've all effectively taken the blue pill cuz like every dopamine dump we get from twitter is a false amount of dopamine. Everything we get that's been told to us is us accepting ignorance as bliss instead of actually living our lives. The more we live digitally, it's more we're accepting the blue pill because we've all chosen to plug in deeper consciously. I I push back on that just because I don't necessarily think it's, I don't necessarily think taking the blue pill equals making the choice to engage with, with social media and other elements of the internet, because I think it's more about you using your own free will to be able to process and act on that information. But the more we let artifice into our own free will, that's more accepting of the unreality of it. Think about how much we accept, like how much of how much a YouTube comment affects you from someone you've never met. That is an artificial construct. But that it's, literally isn't someone. We don't. We we. Those are sometimes bots, even, which is another level of matrix. But we've it's now also entered. not because, like, you're you're engaging, you're engaging with something, and then you're either turning it into something or you're not. But that person you're, might or might not be real. Like, we have no proof of reality there. And we've learned more and more that those are bots leaving comments, making it us accepting the unreality of a digital program affecting our real reality. When you read a YouTube comment and it affects you here, that is accepting I, of digital reality. I understand what you're getting at. I refuse to equate that to what's happening in the, the ma- in the Matrix just because if you take the blue pill, you're basically committing to a life of, like, being in a in a pod and plugged in and unable to do anything but live the life that was programmed for you and sure. in in that confined space with with no free will whatsoever whereas yeah. whether what i'm seeing here whether it's real or not i still have the power to do something with that and that's fair perhaps that's fair. we are still perhaps let it change me maybe even for the better right or do what i can to change it so that's the conversation of fate versus free will yeah and i like that that is still a perception we have that we think we have free will whether or not we do illusions mr anderson temporary constructs of a feeble human intellect trying desperately to justify an existence that is without meaning or purpose i i have free will 
I have free will. <laughs> I love about the third one. You were saying you love the third one. Uh, I love yes. that it's about choice, which is literally what we it just is. had this moment of. Yeah. I was really curious how that would go because the entire third film is about we've learned all these things and the only way to defeat the thing that I'm describing is mm-hmm. what you just did. It's making a choice. Yeah. So welcome to Neo. All right, thanks. You, you <laughs> kind of made me feel better slash I'm still going to be thinking about this and stressed about it. I um, often wonder if people tweeting at me are real or not. Is there anything in particular about the resurrection trailer that caught your eye that you're really excited about? Um, there's a moment when Neo is in an elevator and not only is he in a human-made construct of a box, it is a glass box allowing him to perceive out of the box, but in that perception out of the box, everyone is looking into boxes that are their cell phones. So in the moment of him analyzing the analog, everyone else is analyzing the digital mm-hmm. while he looks out through the analog glass box of reality. So it's a through the looking glass Alice in Wonderland reference while being an analog versus digital reference while acknowledging us plugging in while he is unplugged while he's trying to figure out what reality is. So there is a fourth wall break in that trailer where he's surrounded by four glass walls which reference philosophy, literature, and the prior films and the reality of us watching that in a box itself. That's one of my favorite shots. Like, that's so much. That's so much me and what it yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> it really, it really, really it's, is. It's maybe six seconds. I'll, I'll just go a little broader, and I just like the idea of this potentially being the seventh iteration of, yeah. of The Matrix and the possibility that what we experienced before exists within this version of The Matrix. It's just, like, it should it should make my my brain explode. It shouldn't make any sense whatsoever, but but somehow it kind of, it kind of does, and it fascinates me, and I think it also continues to well reflect what we're doing with our lives today with all of this and and then some. Well, cause after a long enough timeline in our reality, there is like a movie change, right? Like we wake up in a new apartment, we make up new friends, we wake up in a new career, we've entered a new matrix. Like, so we look at our memories and our like past and future don't exist, only present exists. So if you look at your past through a muddled enough lens, it feels like someone else's reality. So it's like another level of the matrix because if enough of your reality has changed, you're a different you. And every seven years we change anyway. Like our entire DNA it replicates every seven years. So our liver right now isn't the same liver we had six years ago, et cetera, et cetera. So are we also living in a different matrix after our, if it's like the the Theseus' ship, right? So if you change everything in the ship, are you still that ship? So are we in a different level of the matrix than either of us were seven years ago? Now, from now on, I'm going to process my New York living as one version of the matrix and my LA living as another version of the matrix. 100%. But it, I mean, it's it's actually a pretty accurate thing because when I when I go to New York, I'm I'm with my family and I'm at the place where I started, and so that is V1. Yeah. And then out here is the next version, and they're all different movies that are our lives, and all we have is the present. So okay. none of those actually exist in any real way. Ramifications of them do, theories of them do, but they're not actually real. Oh man. And the scene yeah. in the trailer where Trinity is uh, Trinity, and then the the, the oh. new character is in between her. That shot oh, intrigues me. Literally There's, anything, Carrie Ann I mean, Moss come on. Is, Carrie Ann is Moss. at the top of like the most exciting list in the past films and in this new trailer. I'm so, and Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, there's so much going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Abdul Mateen II rocking out his young Morpheus. I feel like we could have done like a million episodes of Movie Club just about them. I mean, we, we really. Could do, we could do six hours on the trailer right now. Challenge. We don't have that kind of time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we we got, love this movie. We need to close this door somewhere, but it will reopen. Forever. It's, for all time. It's inevitable. I feel like it's, it's door, always open. Is the door even real? Stop. Can you close Stop. the door if it was never this there? This episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion from Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere's new My List feature gives you more ways to organize and personalize your digital collection than ever. You can either create lists all on your own or let Movies Anywhere do the work for you with a unique algorithm that creates suggested lists based on your purchase and watching habits. So, if you would like to put the My List feature to use and possibly discover some great new movies in the process, simply download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers into one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. So next time we talk about The Matrix, we'll be sure to talk about dream states. We'll be talking about unreality. We'll be talking about conscious versus subconscious. We'll be talking about hallucinogens, their effects on reality, how permanent hallucinogen effects can see through The Matrix, etc. But for now, this has been a great episode and I loved having you. Guys, I need a nap. Have a good one. We'll see you soon with a new episode of Collider Movie Club. Bye.